Okay, so first of all, I have here a formula which takes the decimal date and converts it into the date and time in Excel. And I'll leave a copy of this formula in the description. In the rest of this video, I'm going to be explaining step by step how this works. So first of all, I need to separate the year from everything after the decimal point. So I am going to do equals int, which stands for integer, and this will round down to the nearest whole number. So I get the year on its own. Then I need to get everything after the decimal point on its own as well. So I'll do the decimal date minus the year. And that gets me just the fraction of the year. Then I need to know how many days there are in the year. So whether it is a leap year or not. And to do this, I am going to do equals date and select the year and then do the month as 12 for December and then day will be 31 and then minus the date again and select the year and this time the month will be 1 for January and the day will also be 1. So I'm taking the last day in the year and subtracting the first day and that gets me 364 days which is one less than what I actually want. So I'll add one onto the end of this. And then I get 365 days for all of the years except for the ones that are leap years. So 2012, for example, gets 366 days. Then I need to work out the number of seconds that the fraction is. And in order to do this, I first need to work out the number of seconds in a day. So that is 60 seconds in a minute and then 60 minutes in an hour and then 24 hours in a day. So this is the number of seconds in a day. And I'm going to take the number of days in the year and multiply it by 86,400. And that gets me the total number of seconds in the year. So I'll get two different numbers depending on whether it is a leap year or not. Then I will put this into brackets and I will take the fraction and multiply it by the total number of seconds in the year. And that will get me the number of seconds that the fraction is. Then I need to work out the number of days and in order to do this, I will take the fraction and multiply it by the number of days in the year. And this gets me a whole bunch of decimal places. And everything that is after the decimal point is the time. And then what is before the decimal point is the number of days. And in this column, I just want the number of days. So I'm going to do equals int again to round down to the nearest whole number. And that will get me the number of days. Then I want the date. So I'll do equals date again and select the year. Then the month will be one for January and the day will also be one. And then I'll add on the number of days. So I'm taking the first day of the year and then adding on the number of days in order to work out what the date is. Then I need to work out what the time is. So I first need to work out how many seconds are taken up by the days. So that is going to be the number of days times by 86,400 as that is the number of seconds in a day. And this will get me a whole bunch of numbers and they'll all be slightly smaller than the number of seconds here. And what I want to work out is the difference. So I'll put this into brackets and then do the number of seconds here minus the number of seconds in the days. And this gets me the number of seconds that are left. 
You might get some rounding errors at this point. So in order to fix this, I will do equals round. And then all of this will be the number and the number of digits will be zero. So this will round to the nearest whole number as I want for my seconds to be whole numbers. Then I need to work out the number of hours. So that is going to be the number of seconds that I have left divided by 60 times by 60. So there are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. Or in other words, we'll take the number of seconds and divide it by 3,600. And this gets me the number of hours. I also get a whole bunch of decimal places. In this case, everything after the decimal point is the minutes and the seconds, and everything before the decimal point is the number of hours. So I will use int again to round down to the nearest whole number, and then I get the number of hours. Then I need to work out the number of minutes. So I first need to work out how many seconds are taken up by the hours. So I will do the number of hours multiplied by 3600, and that will convert the hours into seconds. And I will end up with numbers here that are slightly less than these numbers here. I then need to work out the difference between these. So I'll put this into brackets and I'll do the number of seconds here minus the number of seconds in the hours. And this will get me the number of seconds in the minutes. So to convert this into minutes, I need to put this all into brackets and then divide it by 60 as there are 60 seconds in a minute. Then this gets me a whole bunch of decimal places. In this case, everything after the decimal point is the seconds, and everything before the decimal point is the number of minutes. So I will do equals int again. Then I need another open brackets and another close brackets here. And this will round down to the nearest whole number so I get the number of minutes. I then need to work out how many seconds there are. So for this, I will take these seconds here and I need to subtract the number of seconds in the hours. So that's going to be the hours multiplied by 3,600. And I also need to subtract the number of seconds that are taken up by the minutes. So that's going to be the number of minutes multiplied by 60, as there are 60 seconds in a minute. And this will get me the number of seconds. Now I have the date, the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. I can put this all together. So we'll do the date here plus the time. And the hours will be these hours here. The minute will be these minutes. And the seconds will be these seconds. And close brackets and enter. And now I have the date and time. I'll move this to the side so we can compare this to the decimal date. So you'll see here that 2010 becomes the 1st of January 2010 as we're at the very beginning of the year. Then 2012.5 becomes the 2nd of July 2012 as that's exactly in the middle of the year. And then at the end here, 2022.999 becomes the 31st of December 2022 as we're right at the very end of the year. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to convert decimal dates into date and time in Excel, and that is everything.